Hello and welcome to uh, Today I'm joined by Lindsay Makowicki of Bank Square Books. She's going to be joining me to talk about some upcoming author talks and special events coming down the pike here at the United Theater and at Bank Square Books as well. So stay tuned and let's hear a little bit about books from me and Lindsay Makowicki. Hello and welcome back to The Load-In with me, your host, Lee Metzger. Uh, today I'm very excited to be joined in studio by our friend and collaborator, uh, Lindsay Makowicki from Bank Square Books. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me. Lee, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. And this is the first time that we've recorded this, uh, so uh, let's dive right in. Take We're going to be talking about some uh, exciting events coming up. Yes, yeah, so first week of April, big week. We have two events at the United. The first one is Wednesday, April 3rd at 6 p.m. We're hosting Jeanette Walls, and this is a big one. Jeanette is is huge. She's the New York Times bestselling author of The Glass Castle, which was a number one New York Times bestseller for more than eight years. It's been on that list, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, her latest book is called Hang the Moon, and the paperback version of that just came out this past Tuesday, March 26th. So we're lucky to be hosting her almost within a week of the paperback release. Um, and it's going to be great. So it's, it'll be an author talk. So we'll have Jeanette. She'll be talking about her book. Um, and then after, she'll be signing books. We'll have plenty of copies of Hang the Moon for sale. We'll have some copies of The Glass Castle for sale as well. Um, and just wanted to read a blurb that The New York Times did for Hang the Moon. Um, it is a rip-roaring, action-packed novel set during Prohibition, filled with head-spinning plot twists and enough dead bodies, doomed romances, and sudden betrayals to make you wonder if George R. R. Martin has decided to ditch fantasy for Southern Gothic, which just immediately <laughs> sells me in wanting to read it. Um, <laughs> that copy there I plan to read before the event. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a great one. She is absolutely lovely, and we're lucky to have brought her to our little corner of the world here. Now, you said her... So The Glass Castle was on the New York Times bestselling list for... For eight years. Eight years. Yep, yep. And that's um, it, that's a remarkable memoir of resilience and redemption and a revelatory look into a family at once deeply dysfunctional and uniquely vibrant. So it's a very personal story about her life and her upbringing. Um, phenomenal book. And so Hang the Moon is a little bit of a departure from that where she is delving into some Southern Gothic. Um, it seems like very exciting romance betrayals dead bodies i mean oh what, else what more you can need? you ask yeah. for yeah that's incredible uh man eight years is a long time for a book to stay on is that that's that's not is that normal for for a new york times bestselling list not to my knowledge my very limited knowledge of the new york times bestselling list mm. but it is i think it's very noteworthy well, that's, and yeah that's yeah. proof of staying power for mm -hmm. the author mm -hmm. Um, and then we have another one the next day. Yeah, so back-to-back -back days. Um, so Don Winslow, April 4th, 6 p.m. This is also a very exciting event for several reasons, which I will now explain. Um, so this is going to be the Rhode Island launch for Don's latest book, City in Ruins, which is the explosive, impossible-to-put-down conclusion to the New York Times bestselling epic, genre-defining Danny Ryan crime trilogy. And this book is not only the final book in this crime trilogy, but it's also the final book of Don Winslow's incredible writing career. Um, Don is going to be in conversation with best-selling author and Ocean House author series um, 
host Deborah Goodrich Royce. And this is going to be just such a fun event. Um, lots to celebrate with Don ending his career. The book, this isn't a spoiler, in the previous two books, um, do partly take place in Rhode Island. So there's a local connection, which is cool. Um, and I mean, not just Don's career as an author, but he's also had several of his books made into feature films and TV shows. And an exciting recent announcement is that City on Fire, which is the first book in this trilogy, um, is going to be adapted by Sony 3000 Pictures and none other than Oscar nominated Elvis Presley actor um, Austin Butler is going to be starring as uh, Danny Ryan. The main character. I thought you were about to say impersonator. Oh yeah, <laughs> which not, is like not anymore. But maybe. yeah, I wonder where. <laughs> I wonder if uh, at some point, like, what is the de- delineation between like uh, this person, uh, uh, you know, portrayed this, um, you know, famous person in a in a biopic, rather than just like impersonating them around the house? Yeah. Because I guess I I also have starred in the role as Elvis Presley in my own you know, living room. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think that counts. I don't think that's the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's incredible. So Don Winslow has this long and storied career and then he decides on Rhode Island to like call it quits. Yeah. Yeah. So he's kicking off his tour here. Um, and it's just a really special event. Um, I mean the, the movie and other exciting news for big movie fans as we are in a movie theater. It's true. Um, the movie for City on F- on Fire with starring Austin Butler is being produced by David Heyman, who produced the Harry Potter films, mm. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Barbie. Ever heard of it? Heard of it? Um, and Shane Salerno is also producing it, who produced Avatar The Way of Water. So this is going to be Big names. a huge film. And it's exciting. I mean, I'm excited when books get adapted into movies, and this seems like it's going to really be... I mean, who doesn't love a crime trilogy and yeah. this is one of the best um and yeah we're excited to celebrate the ending of a career and the series and also celebrating the launch of this movie yeah and uh i'm sure you know, well we all know that jay-z has retired multiple times so who knows michael jordan michael jordan. wearing the four five like, again you know, you heard of know. him yeah ever heard of him uh, that's amazing. So these two events are gonna are coming up uh, very shortly. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have anything else coming down the pike? Um, we have one event I like to plug in April. So we have some Southern Gothic murder mystery romance. We have some uh, crime fiction for our romance readers. Um, we have a release party um, at Bank Square Books on s- Tuesday, April twenty third at six thirty p.m to celebrate the release of her new book, which is called Funny Story. Um, I've already read it, spoiler alert, without any spoilers. It's phenomenal, classic Emily Henry. You won't want to miss the book. Um, So we have tickets on sale for that at our website. And if you are one of the first 12 people to buy tickets, you will get a signed copy of the book, which is a very exclusive opportunity Mm. only for event attendees at certain bookstores across the country that are hosting a release party for it. So come hang with us. We'll have drinks and snacks, some fun games, some fun giveaways, um, 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, uh, April 23rd. I imagine a a romance author might find new and fun and interesting ways to sign their books. Yeah, you never know. I mean, sometimes they choose a pen color to match the cover. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful purple colored cover, so... You won't. You never know until you get it. <laughs> so I, I, th- I think if I was there, is are will they be signing the books in house or are they going to come pre signed? No, they'll come pre signed. Bummer, because yeah. I feel like I'd, I'd. <laughs> would it be uncouth? You know what? Never mind. Because I was going <laughs> to say like, <laughs> would it be would it be possible to maybe kiss the inside of the uh, of the of the book? For a for a hub hubber is what we're called in the romance uh fiction <laughs> uh <laughs> fandom i'm a hub hubber um uh, i think i think may, maybe i maybe i won't ask uh an author to kiss their book sealed with a kiss yeah. maybe we'll bring it back um the well, speaking of signed books so a lot of authors when they're doing like signing thousands of books before a release to be sold in bookstores mm. 
um, it'll be a tip in sheet. So they'll be just signing a piece of paper a thousand times. And then when the book is being compiled, they will add that sheet in. So it's usually like before the title page which is still a cool collectible item to get a signed copy, especially for authors like Emily Henry. She is huge, and I'm sure all of her events for her book tour are already sold out, so um, I don't think she's coming near us, unfortunately, but hopefully soon. Mm. But at our book events um, in April with Jeanette Walls and Don Winslow, they will be personalizing and signing the books right there in front of you, so if you want it to be addressed to yourself or a friend if you're going to gift it, or if it's a someone's birthday and they're a huge fan, they can't make it, you, you know, the authors will usually write a, a quick message. Um, but it's cool to have a book that has your name and has the author yeah. signature on the title page because it was kind of like, I've been here, I've met this author. Oh, yeah. Where the tip and sheet, you know, we sell a lot of signed copies. Signed first editions are a huge collector's item, and a lot of those are tip and sheet. So, an unasked for behind the scenes of the publishing industry and how signed copies work. And if you can spot a tip in sheet versus that's going to be uh, a title page sign. Yeah. That'll, uh, that'll fetch a higher, a higher, uh, higher monetary gain. Mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. you were to don't be reselling books though. No, no. Those are for personal use. Don't be, uh, 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 trying to make a quick buck off of these nice, nice yeah. authors. Um, yeah, what else you got coming down? Anything there's else? there's a lot coming down, but that's um, that's kind of it for April. Our big three mm. events. So we've got two back to back incredible author talks here at the United, and we've got a um, a romance uh, um, a romance novelist's delight yes. at Bank Square Books as well. Yes, join us, and we have a lot of in store events more coming down here at the United in May and beyond. So oh yeah, stay tuned. Keep your eyes podcasts. Peeled. Oh yeah, yeah. This is going to be one of many, many collaborate co- collaborative podcasts. I'm sure. Uh, well, Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad that we can get to do this. I'm and I'm excited for the next time. Thanks, Lee. Are you going to be at those events? I will be at both the events. I will be hey. on stage doing the introduction. So you will. If you're sick of my voice. I apologize because you will hear more of it at get both of the events. It. And. Yeah, hope to see everyone there. Should we come up with something that's the opposite of a spoiler alert? Should we just say, like, informational alert? Yeah, yeah. Info incoming. Info info dump. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you go to one of these events and you see either Lindsay or I, come up and say info dump to us, and we'll, we'll know that you listen to the podcast. <laughs> Can't wait. All right, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Lee. Thanks for tuning in to the United Theatre Podcast Network. If you enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to subscribe to our show so you never miss an episode. And if you could take a moment to leave a review, we'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us create content that you love. So hit that subscribe button and leave us a review, and we'll see you on the next episode.